In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the four-wheel drive vacuum hub actuator on this Ford F-150. This is the vacuum actuator that sits on the back side of the knuckle in between the CV axle and the bearing. And when you engage four-wheel drive, it connects the two together and, well, allows the wheel to drive the vehicle. So, if you need this or any other part, check us out at oneauto.com. Let's get started. To get started, let's remove the wheel. Right in the center, you'll see six 21 millimeter lug nuts. Unfortunately, it is common for these to swell up and rust underneath the chrome caps. So I'm gonna use a 22 millimeter socket. But if yours are still in good condition, use a 21 millimeter socket and take all of them off. Now that you have all the lug nuts removed, remove the wheel. With the wheel removed, it will be easiest if we disconnect the tie rod end off of the knuckle. So right here, you'll see the nut that secures the stud onto the knuckle. Use a 21 millimeter socket and remove this mounting nut. And with it removed, use a hammer, tap on the knuckle right here to break the tie rod stud free and allow it to pop up. There we go. Now I like to tie this out of my way with a bungee cord, or you can let it hang if you want, but if you tie it, it'll give you a lot more space to work around here without this coming back down and uh, while getting in your way. On the back side of the knuckle, you have the vacuum hose for the four-wheel drive hub. Pop that off and set it aside. Now from the back side of the knuckle, we'll have to unbolt the caliper from the knuckle, the whole assembly with the bracket, so just these two 18 millimeter bolts. However, before we do this, if you look right here, the brake hose attaches to the knuckle and the ABS sensor as well, both of which we will have to remove off of the knuckle. So let's just start with the ABS sensor, which has an eight millimeter bolt going through it. Sometimes this clip, especially if it's not an original sensor anymore, will get in the way, but take this out. Set that wire aside, save the bolt, of course, and then with a 10 millimeter socket, remove the brake hose bolt. Remove this bracket off of the knuckle. This will give us enough slack to move the caliper aside. 18 millimeter socket on both of these bolts. Don't confuse them with these, which hold the wheel bearing on. They are also the same size. Leave this one partially threaded in so you can take out the other one. Take this one out all the way. And then you can take this one out all the way. Support the caliper, get a bungee cord or some sort of a hook that'll hold the caliper for you. And you want to tie it up against the frame. Flip it over. I like to tie it right here on this axis hole for the frame with a nice strong bungee cord. And this way it's supported and you don't put any pressure on this brake hose. Now your rotor should be loose if it's seized onto the hub. And of course you're reusing your rotor. You wanna to try to tap right in between the lug studs to break it free, not on the braking surface, either on the front or on the back. That will damage this and you have to replace it. Try not to hit the lug studs though when you do this. Also, there are two threaded holes that you can put some bolts through and those will push it away from the hub. Having said that, mine is free. So I'm just gonna pull it right off. As you can see, there's already anti-seize here. So someone's been in here before and has applied anti-seize, which is what we're gonna wanna do, but it looks like it does need some cleaning. So we'll take care of that. Because we have to do this anyway, I'm just going to wipe off the anti-seize now. That way it doesn't get all over as I handle this. I'm going to show you how to properly clean it later, but at least if the anti-seize is out of my way, it's not gonna get everywhere and smear on everything. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. Yours might not even have any. Hopefully it's not rusted, but I'm going to leave it just like this for now. We'll come back to it later. Using some pliers, let's remove the axle nut cap. Now, if pliers don't do it for you, a lot of times it's seized on here and stuck. Well, you could use a chisel or a little screwdriver and tap it right on the top there. That usually will break it free and make it pop off. In here, you'll see the axle nut. It's usually a small 13 millimeter nut. This shouldn't be very tight at all. Take it off and set it aside safely. Because the inside of this wheel bearing is greased up for the four wheel drive actuator, it is unlikely that this axle is seized in here, but it can happen. So what you wanna do, push on the front side, pull on the back side if needed, make sure it slides through. If it slides easily like this, perfect, you're good to go. If not, you're gonna to wanna to put that nut back on flush with the end of the threads, take a rubber mallet, not a steel hammer, and tap it until it breaks free. 
Continue by removing the ABS sensor from the vehicle so we can pull the knuckle away with no restriction here. You definitely don't want to damage this. There are very thin wires inside, very delicate, and you don't want to have to replace it if you don't actually need to. Once I get to this point, I prefer to just unplug it and get it out of the way completely as opposed to leaving it hanging like this. And to do that, just follow it up. This right here is going to be the securing point for the ABS wire. Flip it over and unplug it. Follow the knuckle up and you'll see a 21 millimeter nut that holds on the ball joint stud, the upper ball joint to the knuckle. Let's remove this. Most likely you'll have to use a swivel here. Okay, once you get it off all the way, or most of the way, you wanna leave it on just a few threads. I'm gonna thread it back on by hand so that as we break this knuckle free, when it comes down, it doesn't just swing further than it needs to. Now tap the knuckle right here with a hammer till this ball joint pops off. It shouldn't take a whole lot. There we go. Press the control arm down, remove the mounting nut, let the control arm go up. It's not gonna go very far up, but as much as the bushings are pulling it. And as the knuckle comes down and forward, you wanna make sure the axle pushes through, just like this. Perfect, all right. And now from the back of the knuckle, you have three eight millimeter bolts to remove to get this vacuum hub actuator off of here. Now a lot of times these are gonna be seized in here, so try to spray some rust penetrant. It looks like this one has been recently removed, so I actually still have some, some grease on these bolts from the last person that was in here, but a lot of times rust penetrant is going to be your best friend in this situation. There's a third bolt right here. I'm gonna have to move the axle out of the way with this third bolt removed, which by the way, they all look the same. So now you can pull this hub actuator off of here. And the best way to get it separated from the axle is to lift the axle up and out with the actuator. And there it is. On the new hub actuator, you're gonna to wanna to grease it inside on both sides. And uh, if there isn't a lot of grease right around this seal, you're gonna to wanna to apply some here as well. Let's take a bunch of all purpose grease or wheel bearing grease, whatever you have, pack it in here. You want these splines here to be nice and greased up so that as you engage four wheel drive, especially if you are actively rolling, which you can do, you can engage it while you're driving. It meshes the gears together properly and they basically slip into one another with no risk of any sort of damage. And the reason I'm packing some extra is so that years down the road, there still is grease in here, especially if the seals happen to start leaking a little bit and uh, if it starts flinging as you're driving. The most important parts here are that the gears, this ring here is greased up and of course the seal, put some grease on the inside part of the seal, on the outside also, right around here. Add some grease to this surface where it contacts the hub. This can spin and you want it to have zero friction metal on metal. All right, with this greased up, let's install it. At this point, we're gonna have to get the four wheel drive vacuum hub over the axle so that we can actually Put the two back on the knuckle, just like this. Line up the actuator. Start in the three bolts that hold this on. Tighten these up. Make sure they're nice and snug, but of course they are easy to break because they're small, so don't break them. Double check them. And there you go, this is installed. Now before we put the axle back through, through the hub, through the four wheel drive actuator, I like to grease this up a little. As you can see, I've cleaned off the old grease and I always like to apply new grease, even though it's still in good condition, even though we have plenty of grease in here, just reapply some on the splines right here where the seal rides. It can't hurt, it can only help. Now before we put the axle into the knuckle, I'm gonna reapply some grease, not just to this shaft here, but also to the splines. It's important that you clean off any old grease and re-grease it. I mean, if the old grease looks just fine, then leave it, but new grease is always good. You want the four wheel drive actuator to engage properly, especially since you 
are able to engage four wheel drive while driving, while this is spinning, and you want it to mesh onto these splines perfectly at regular driving speeds. Otherwise you'll have some grinding and four wheel drive issues overall. You don't need a lot of grease. There should already be grease in there. And at this point, let's bring the knuckle up, slide the uh, axle through slowly. Make sure it actually comes through the front. If it doesn't line up, try spinning it. There we go. Just like that. Line up the upper ball joint with the knuckle here. Hold the knuckle in place until you get to put the mounting nut on. Push the upper control arm down. If you can't push it down enough, just use a pry bar in here. Pry it down. Looks like I've got just a few threads to stick out. That's perfect. So let's grab the 21 millimeter socket here and tighten up this mounting nut. You'll need a swivel for this one. Torque for this is 85 foot pounds. The knuckle's gonna spin, but as soon as it bottoms out, there we go, that's 85. Put the vacuum hose back on the hub. Push the axle through. Make sure that the threads come out all the way. This is not all the way. You want the axle to get into the four wheel drive hub seated. There we go, that's all the way. When you can't move it around left and right, that's how you know it's seated. The seal that we were, the seal back there is basically what positions it perfectly in place. So once it's pressed in and through, take the mounting nut. If you still have your original one, it'll be a 13 millimeter. For me, it's a 15 millimeter. And uh, let's tighten it up. The torque for this is only 20 foot pounds. So once you bottom it out, just leave it there and grab the torque wrench. You don't want to over tighten it by accident. That's snug. Hold the uh, hub from spinning because it's so low you can just hold it by hand. And that's it right there. Don't be tempted to go even further than this because it can damage the wheel bearing if it has too much pressure on this. This basically squishes everything together here and 20 foot pounds is all that this wheel bearing needs. Next, take the little cap. I just put some silicone around it and uh, you, can, you can put grease if you want. Basically the goal here is to seal this up completely. Take a rubber mallet, tap it in. Once it's bottomed out, you can wipe off the excess goo. And uh, well, there you go, that's installed. This just protects the threads from rust and debris and all that. So just make sure it's nice and tight in there. When it comes to the hub, mine's pretty clean. It is a fairly new hub, it looks like, but I still see some pitting and rust buildup. So I'm going to take a wire wheel on a drill and kind of clean this up. I don't need to sand anything at this point. If you do, if it's rotted and has severe rust buildup, you might need some, some sanding discs on a little die grinder, but whatever you have, make sure that the surface is very flat and clean here. We will reapply anti-seize at the end, but if the rotor doesn't sit flat, the wheel doesn't sit flat, and you get weird braking issues and vibrations down the road, so you wanna avoid that. So clean this up. Okay, the outer ring looks perfect here. The inner one, I'm going to uh, try to get this wire wheel in there. It's important that you do these two ridges here, the center. I mean, if it's built up a lot, sure, sand it down, but it doesn't really matter because it's actually re recessed into the hub. So the rotor only touches here and here, really. Let's grab some brake parts cleaner and clean this all up. With a collection bucket underneath, spray this down. and apply anti-seize to the entire surface of the hub. Try to avoid getting it on the lug studs though. There we go. If you have the brush kind, that actually sometimes is better because it's a more controlled application. And at this point, if you are reusing your old rotor, make sure you clean up the inside of the rotor too. You can see those two rust ridges. That's exactly where the hub was riding and will. So sand these down, make sure they're nice and flat. I'm actually not reusing the old rotor. I have a new one. But regardless, the procedure is the same from here on, whether you're using old or new brakes. Now take your rotor and slide it over. I like to put a lug nut on so it can hold the rotor for me and it doesn't flop around. It'll not only make the caliper installation a lot easier, 
but if rust falls down in between here from it moving around, hitting the backing plate, well now you have a rust chunk that's pushing the rotor off, tilted one, one side and well you just cleaned it up and uh, made this flat surface, worked really hard to do that and now the rotor isn't sitting straight. So make sure you secure it. Now you want to take your caliper and slide it over the rotor, grab the two bolts that hold this on, start them in. Sometimes you have to move this around a few uh, times to actually get it to line up. Okay, there we have it. They're started. Let's tighten them up, make sure the ABS wire isn't getting pinched anywhere. This is still, this brake hose isn't looped around. You didn't accidentally spin the caliper. If you do, well, take it off and definitely do not twist this around because it will restrict brake fluid flow. 18 millimeter socket. Oops, wrong bolt. Yep, pay attention. 136 foot pounds is the torque for both of these bolts. There's one and two. Resecure the brake hose as well as the ABS wire. We'll do this one first. This is the 10 millimeter bolt. Thread it all the way in. Hopefully you can do this by hand. A lot of times these get rusty. If they do, clean them up, potentially replace them if necessary. And I recommend adding anti-seize to them so that it doesn't rust in the future. Get this one started as well. And let's snug them up. There we go. Be careful with these. You don't want to break them. They are small. Perfect. Let's resecure the ABS sensor on this bracket where the brake hose also is. It also gets resecured up here by the uh, control arm. And finally, the main electrical connector. Make sure it clicks. Put it behind the fender liner and lock it in. Get the tie rod back into the knuckle. Put the mounting nut on. Tighten it up and the torque is 85 foot-pounds. That's it right there. Let's get the wheel back on. Start on all six of your lug nuts, bottom them out, and the torque for these in a cross pattern is 150 foot-pounds. Double check them if you want and take it for a road test. So there you have it. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, don't forget to leave a like. And if you have anything to say, leave it in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you can stay up to date with all of our future content. Thanks for watching.